Welcome to Natural Gas World's weekly overview of the news in the global gas industry with me, Joseph Murphy. EastMed producer Energian has penned deals worth $2.5 billion for the supply of 1.4 billion cubic meters per year of gas from the Karish field it is developing off Israel. The new deals cover gas supply to Israeli power stations. They will become active once Karish starts up, expected in the second half of 2021. This brings total contracted volumes from the project to 7 BCM per year, meaning Energian only has 1 BCM of capacity at the Karish FPSO unit left to sell. Energian says it is looking for buyers both in Israel and further afield. It is also preparing to take a final investment decision later this year on Karish North, a satellite field of Karish. Sticking with Israel, the country's Petroleum Council regulator has approved Chevron's $5 billion takeover of Houston-based producer Noble Energy. Noble is operator of Leviathan, a field off Israel with over 620 BCM in recoverable gas that began production in January. Closure of this deal, expected early in the fourth quarter, will also see Chevron build up its US unconventionals position. Moving to Egypt, Italy's Eni has found even more gas in the Great Norus area. Eni and partner BP reported a discovery this week at the Abu Madi West development lease in the Nile Delta. It was made four kilometers north of the Norus field, which Eni began producing from in 2015. Thanks to this latest find, Eni now estimates the Great Norus area to contain over 110 BCM of gas. Eni has made several discoveries off Egypt in the last few years, most recently 12 kilo- kilometers northwest of Norus in July. The close proximity of these fields brings down development times and costs. Eni has earned a reputation for strong exploration results in Egypt and for rapidly developing its fields. Back in 2015, it found the Zor field with over 850 BCM of gas and took it into production within two years. Also in the news this week, Argentina has reportedly made a big push to advance infrastructure to realize more potential from the massive but isolated Vacamurta shell formation. The country is reportedly in talks with Brazil on building a $4.9 billion pipeline to flow gas from Vacamurta to Brazil's Porto Alegre. Both governments are keen on the plan, and there have already been discussions with potential investors, according to Reuters. The pipeline would help galvanize Vacamurta's development and provide Brazil, an LNG importer, with greater amounts of likely cheaper pipeline gas. Meanwhile, Chinese energy firm Power China is understood to be in talks to build a railway to deliver oil and gas from Vacamurta to the Argentine port of Bahia Blanca, which hosts a refining and petrochemicals hub. The cost of this project is estimated at up to $1.5 billion, although China may help finance it. Vacamurta holds an estimated 11 trillion cubic meters of gas and 16 billion barrels of liquids, but it has not lived up to its potential and greater investment is needed in exploration and production, as well as infrastructure to bring its oil and gas to markets in order for output to keep growing. Russia looks set to move forward with a long-planned IPO at its state shipping giant, Sovcom Flot. The wholly state-owned company is expected to sell a 25% stake in October, according to Russia's finance ministry, raising $500 million. The funds will be used by Sovcom Flot to invest in new projects and lower its debt. Banks VTB Capital, Citibank, Spearbank, JP Morgan and B of A Securities have been picked as global coordinators and book runners for the issue. Sovcom Flot owns nearly 150 tankers, dry cargo ships and other vessels, including a fleet of 15 LNG carriers, and it earned over $820 million in core earnings last year. An IPO was first proposed nearly two decades ago, and talks of the company's partial privatization have ebbed and flowed ever since. Russian officials announced an an offering in 2017 as part of a push to raise funds for the budget after several years of low oil prices. But as prices recovered and Russia's finances improved, the plan was shelved. At that time, Sovcom Flot's debt pile was expected to deter investors. But its net debt to a beta ratio is now only 2.7 compared with over 5.3 back in 2017. This has been Natural Gas World's weekly overview of the news in the global gas industry with me, Joseph Murphy. Thank you and see you next time.